High above the prisoners' quarters, your next foe awaits you. My name is Kodiak, and today I'll take you into the clock room and teach you how to defeat the timekeeper in Dead Cells. The Timekeeper encounter is a three-phase fight that gets progressively harder and more complex with each subsequent phase. The boss stands between you and the High Peak Castle and is the last major fight before you reach the throne room. Starting in phase one gives you an easy introduction to the boss's main abilities. The first main ability is a simple sword slash. The boss will close the distance gap between you and her and perform a simple melee attack. Players caught in range will take a healthy chunk of damage. Players will want to roll through or away from the boss to avoid taking damage. Her second main ability is a shuriken throw. In phase one, the boss throws one shuriken in a straight line towards the player. Avoiding this ability can be done by simply rolling through or jumping over the projectile. The boss's final offensive ability in phase one is quite possibly the most deadly. The boss will throw a hook at the player. If the hook hits the player, they'll be pulled into melee range and rooted in place. This ability is always followed up by a powerful melee attack. Avoiding this ability is crucial to player success throughout the fight. The boss also has one defensive ability she'll use throughout phase one. Occasionally, she will teleport a short distance away from the player and prepare her next offensive ability. To get through phase one, players will need to feel comfortable dodging the boss's main abilities. Her moveset is executed much quicker than that of the concierge, and players that aren't used to that pace of play will quickly meet the business end of her sword. Put some distance between you and the timekeeper and be prepared to counter whatever ability the boss is telegraphing. Avoiding the hook is key to your success. Utilize traps to chip away at the boss's health and think about employing some sort of frost ability. This will make the fight much easier as the boss's main strength, her speed, is negated. Phase two begins at 70%. The timekeeper will surround herself in shurikens and after a short delay, fire the projectiles out in all directions. The boss will continue to use her phase one abilities, but in phase two, they become much more potent and more deadly. The boss's slash turns into a two hit combo. Players will have to be prepared to avoid two melee strikes in succession. Players will want to quickly move away from the boss's melee range to avoid taking damage. The timekeeper will now also throw three shurikens at the player in quick succession. These projectiles still move in a straight line and will follow the players vertically to some degree. Dodging and jumping are still your best bets to avoid taking damage. The boss adds a new move to her arsenal in phase two. Periodically, she'll dash in a straight line across the room. Players caught in the path of the dash will take damage. This ability is similar to that of the bat in the promenade or the clock tower biomes. Players can jump or time a dodge to avoid this ability. The boss will continue to use her hook and teleport abilities from phase one. They do not function any differently than that in the previous phase. Phase two isn't much different than phase one. A good traps based build will help players chip away at the boss's health while you continue to avoid her abilities. The addition of the dash does present itself as a new problem, but players that are comfortable dodging will already find it no more challenging than any other ability they've already run across. Phase three begins at 35%. Once again, the boss will surround herself with shurikens and after a short delay, she'll fire them out in every direction. In phase three, the boss's abilities have reached their most deadly form. The timekeeper's melee strike now happens three times in a row. Players caught in melee range will take a large chunk of damage if they're hit by her strikes. Once again, creating space between you and the boss is your best bet to avoiding damage. Also, the boss's shuriken toss now includes five projectiles instead of three. Just jumping to avoid the abilities becomes a lot more challenging with the addition of two projectiles, so a combination of jumping and rolling is what you need to avoid taking damage. The boss's dash ability is also empowered during this phase. The boss will quickly dash twice in succession across the room. Players will either need to string dodge rolls together or a combination of jumping and dodging to avoid taking damage. Phase three also presents a new challenge to the encounter. Swords will begin to fall from the ceiling. After a short telegraph, they'll drop vertically in a line from the top of the map to the ground. Players caught in the path of the line will take damage. As in phases one and two, the boss will continue to use her hook abilities as well as her defensive teleport. The Timekeeper is all about understanding the rhythm of the fight. Once you learn the boss's abilities in phase one, you have all the tools you need to defeat her. Learning to string a jump and dodge together is not only useful during this fight, but on many of the fights found throughout the game. The boss is very susceptible to crowd control abilities such as frost and traps, so plan ahead. An ice bow or wolf trap will keep the Timekeeper locked down, negating a large portion of her abilities. As always, if this is your first time trying to defeat the boss, I recommend building with traps in mind. 
Sinew Slicers and Double Crossbow Maddox make short work of the boss and will help you push through the phases quickly. If you're a fan of shields, you'll find that most of the boss's abilities can be parried, but as normal, I don't subscribe to this strategy personally. Parrying can be effective in the right hands, but nothing will be more successful than learning how to string a jump and dodge together. Keep calm, learn the boss's abilities, and prepare ahead of time. The Timekeeper is a quick opponent, but weak when it comes to crowd control, so plan accordingly. If you stay calm and continue to chip away at the boss's health while dodging her abilities, you'll be moving on to the final parts of Dead Cells in no time. For those players looking to really make a statement, here's a pro tip. The boss can be defeated incredibly quick if you have the right weapons going into the fight. If you sink enough damage into the boss, you'll be able to defeat her without having to deal with the majority of the abilities in most of the phases. Obviously, this is a high-risk, high-reward situation, but I'd be remiss if I didn't include it. If you have any questions on defeating the Timekeeper or want to share your strategy for success, leave us a comment in the section below or consider joining our Discord community, where we talk about the latest video game news, titles, and trends, including Dead Cells. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at the Game Gurus, thanks for watching and play on.